Hello, this is Ronnie again, <coughs> your friendly lecturer for financial accounting. In today's video, I want to uh, solve a difficult consolidation scenario and kind of walk it through with you and as if you are listening in <coughs> to how I think and solve this problem. Uh, you, the problem that I'm going to show you and go through is uh, what you have heard on lectures. So this is just kind of a repeat, but it's good for those who need to hear it again. So here's the example. Uh, it's you have Tom and Hanks, and so first thing you need to work out is who's the uh, parent, who's the subsidiary. You can see here Tom acquired Hanks, so and seventy five percent, more than fifty percent. So Tom must be the parent, which means Hanks is subsidiary. And it was purchased on 31st December 2007 for this much. So we've got to work out, was there any goodwill? <coughs> and since we bought in 75%, there should be a MI or, uh, sorry, MI is the old term. There should be a non-controlling interest or NCI of 25%. And we're told the net assets of that date was this. So that's easy, therefore, to work out the goodwill. And these are the financial statements. The uh, income statements there followed by the balance sheets. So let's see what are we required to do. We are required to prepare the consolidation journal entries. Um, and that's it. So first up, when you have a question like this, the first thing to do is to work out the elimination of investment account. So going back to the balance sheet, Tom is the parent, so you expect to see investment in Hanks. And it's here, 110000 um, and this 110,000 reflects the consideration you paid. Remember, the consideration is always the same as the investment, right? Because the double entry is debit investment, credit cash, if you pay by cash. So 110,000, uh, but the net assets is 120,000, but you need to uh, acquire 75%. So 75% of 120,000 is the net assets that you acquire which is this much minus this. I think this is much lesser than the 110,000 you paid. So there actually has a goodwill of 20,000. There you go, 20,000 goodwill. Alright, so that's the first thing I'll work out. Secondly, I then uh, eliminate the investment. It's a debit balance. So when you eliminate, you credit it. Uh, which leaves me with the uh, net assets that I acquire. Right? And the net assets I require must be the same as the 120,000 times 75 percent. So first things first, uh, we have to identify how many items are there. In this case, there are three. How do we know? Well, uh, we are told here. Well, if you look at the balance sheets of uh, Hanks, he has three equity items. So beginning with share capital. For share capital, we are told that there are no change since 31st December 2007 and we acquired it on 31st December 2007 oh same day or the same day as the date that it has not changed so we definitely had acquired 100,000 there's no change so 100,000 therefore over the share capital we, uh, that was there then so we need acquired 75% so we only have 75% then of share capital that we need to eliminate. Then that brings us to the retained profits. Retained profits is 65,000 uh, as of this date, which is 31st December 2009. Uh, but we don't know how much it was on that date. So we leave this first. Then we go to general reserve. For general reserve, we are told, always look for the additional information. Uh, general reserve is $10,000, right? at the date of acquisition, which is 31st December 2007. So we know for sure it's $10,000, right? And has it changed since then? No, nope. it, it has by 5000 But don't worry, that 5000 belongs to post-acquisition. Now we're doing at the date of acquisition. At the date of acquisition, it's $10,000. So we take the $10,000 times the amount we acquire, which is 7500 And now that we have worked these two out, Right, we can now take the net assets that we acquired, which is remember earlier on this much is the one we acquire, so it's this one, minus away this, sorry, minus away the seventy-five thousand, which is here, and minus away the general reserve, which is here. 
and by doing so we can finally work out the retained profits there we go if you want to double check if you add these three items you add the 75,000 add the 7,500 and you add the 7,500 it should equal the net assets you acquired and since you pay more uh, I guess you add this all up it should be 90,000 and since you pay more you have a 20,000 goodwill and there you go that you're done with the elimination of investment account okay once you get that the next thing to do is to record the NCI at date acquisition because this is required by FRS and just to recap guys why do we need to eliminate the investment we need to eliminate because invest if you don't there will be double counting right it will be double counting the net assets of what we acquire so going now to part B to record the NCI at acquisition date we know it's 25 percent and we now that you know all the figures on the date of acquisition so for share capital is 100,000 right so it's 100,000 NCI is 25 percent so it's 25,000 and we know it's 10,000 at date acquisition times 25 percent it's 2005 and since we know this 7,500 is 75%, uh, right? So you just divide by 75%, you gross it up to 100%, then times the 25% you acquired, which will give you 2,500. Add all these three, you get the NCI of 30,000. Another way to, to, double, to get this figure or to double check that this figure is correct is to take the 90,000 that we acquired right 90,000 sorry we know the net assets is 120,000 just take the 120,000 times the 25 percent which is exactly what's going on here and it's 30,000 see 30,000 equals 30,000 that's how we double check that this figure obtained by doing this math way should be the same as the way we check it and guess what it's the same all right so hopefully uh, you understand what's going on so far let me just pause to let you digest for a min moment. So remember these two journal entries go hand in hand at the date of acquisition. Right? First, you eliminate investment, check whether there's a goodwill. Uh, and secondly, record the NCI. Because required by FRS to show NCI separate from equity. So all these are equity items, you take it out. By nature, it's credit balance, so we take out with debit and credit NCI. It's a separate item. All right, next thing we need to take note is uh, post acquisition, or rather, post acquisition reserves. So, NC, uh, FRS requires us to show NCI not just at acquisition date, but also for, the, for its post acquisition reserves. Means, whatever uh, equity that it owns after the date acquisition till currently. Meaning from the date it was purchased, which is 31st December 2007, to now, which is 2009. So how many years has it been that? Whole of 08, whole of 09. Two years have passed since then. All right, so the two years will be the post-acquisition reserves. So to work out how much uh, belongs to the non-controlling interest, we need to firstly work out all the post-acquisition reserves since the date of acquisition. We know an acquisition is 120,000 and all these are uh, the uh, at post. So now, uh, sorry, at acquisition. So now for post, ask yourself, has the 100,000 change? Has the retained profit change? Has the general reserve changed since at the acquisition? For share capital, we know for sure it has not changed. Right? No change. So it's still 100,000. No change. So it's 100, so therefore, uh, no change, so there's, so there's no post acquisition. That's why share capital doesn't appear here. How about general reserve? We know that uh, at acquisition is ten thousand, but now it's fifteen thousand. So since then, there must be a five thousand dollars change, right? So that's why we take the five thousand dollars times what belongs to NCI. It's one two five zero. Next is the retained profits. Let me just go now to ink mode in case I need to uh, write some things for you. Where's my ink mode? All right. Okay, don't worry about it. Oh, there we go. Start ink. 
All right, felt pen. Okay, there we go. So we have cleared this. This is done. Uh, so now we have to work out this, right? Now to work out this, we know that uh, at acquisition, our retained profits must be this plus this wish. Because this is 75%, this is 25%. So together, it should be how much? Uh, 7 plus 2, 9, so it's $10,000, right? $10,000 at acquisition. But now, now... It's sixty-five thousand dollars. So post acquisition, therefore, must be fifty-five thousand dollars, right? Fifty-five, fifty-five k, correct? Post acquisition. There, can you see here? But out of this fifty-five, FRS tells us to break it down into uh, what's the current year's profit and the uh, remaining. Uh, retain profit from the date acquisition to the opening balance of this year. Right, so to do that, just take the $55,000 minus the current year's net profit, which is, as you can see, it's $25,000, right? So the fit, out of the $55,000, $25,000 belongs to the current year, and the remaining is the $30,000. Can you see? So that's where the remaining is in the second line. So for the first twenty-five thousand dollars, take twenty-five percent, it gives you six two five zero, and the remaining thirty thousand times twenty-five percent gives you seven thousand five hundred. With that, once you're finished accounting for these reserves, because there are no other reserves, right? They're all accounted for. You can now add all these three, right? It's the six thousand, the seven thousand five, and the one two five zero, and it should give you fifteen thousand. Now, in the exam, if you want to double check if this 15,000 is correct, how can you do that? <coughs> this is for double check purposes. Well, what you need to do is you take the post acquisition reserves, meaning uh, what is the uh, total of the post acquisition times 25%. You know, an acquisition is 120,000, right? Earlier on, we are told. Right? We work out it's 120,000, right? So, at acquisition. As for post, we know this hasn't changed. This hasn't changed. And the and we know an acquisition is ten thousand. So it's fifty five K. Right? And we know at acquisition also it was a ten K general reserve. So which means there's a five K. So altogether what's the post? The post is sixty thousand. That's why That's why, uh, or put another way, is you just add up all these three, you get 180,000, right? So 180,000. So 180,000 minus 120 is a 60,000, I, I mentioned just now, times 25%, and voila, you get 15,000. So see, it checks for you that it's correct. If this happens in exams, you know you're on the right track. So once you have done uh, the accounting, the consolidation entry for NCI post acquisition, the next step is to ask yourself, is there any intra-group account balances that you need to uh, net off? Right? Otherwise, uh, you're not reporting it properly. Because from a group's perspective, any intra-group Transactions are not uh, supposed to be counted. So looking at the balance sheet, so you go to the balance sheet and ask yourself, look, there's an amount owing by Hanks. It means Hank must have borrowed money from Tom, and so from Tom's books, there's a receivable from Hank, Hanks. That's why it's here in the asset category. Right? Amount owing, 20000 So likewise, you should see an amount, uh, amount due to, right? So in Hank's books, you're not owing to Tom. So these two balances need to net off because from a goods perspective, uh, this transaction doesn't exist, right? Because it's, in, it's an internal transaction. So you cannot 
let the reader read as though this this twenty eight thousand is something which uh, the group has transaction transacted with some outside the group. So any intra group transactions have to be eliminated. So since it's the debit balance to eliminate, you credit this account, and since this account is credit imbalance, you to eliminate you debit it. That is why you do like that. You credit the uh, receivable and you debit the payable. So normally for exam purposes, I'll test you up to here, but for additional teaching purposes, uh, if, there, if there are other intra-group transactions like there's a sale between the two uh, group companies, we must also emit that transaction. And if you look at additional information, we are told here that there was such a thing in this paragraph where Hanks uh, bought 20,000 from Tom. So in Hanks' books, sorry, Hanks buying from Tom. So in Tom's book, there will be a sale in Hanks' books. Uh, in Tom's book, there will be a sale. And also in Tom's book, there will be a cost of goods sold. Being so. so to eliminate those two transactions, we must debit sales and credit cost of sales. And when we do that, we have accounted for all the transactions. Now I won't go through this uh, balance sheet, but I'll stop at the journal entry. This one I'll let you read on your own and hopefully you understand. If not, please come and look for me. Right, but I hope this explanation of the journal entries will help you understand. Alright, this is Ronnie, your MC. Have a good day. Bye-bye.